everybody. Thank you for being here. Um, this is a recorded panel, so please click that button. Um, and we'll post the recording so that um, the applicants can come back and hear the notes if they missed them the first time, um, if people are interested in um, applying and want to see kind of how a panel is run, um, if they are interested in being a panelist. So we make that, um, we make that link available on our website. Um, thank you to all the panelists for being here. I appreciate your hard work. We have nine um, submissions that you all reviewed uh, in your due diligence and um, reviewed and are getting ready to talk about. So um, with that, I will turn it over to Melissa. Thank you. And hi, everybody. And thanks for coming. Um, just a few notes for any guests who may be in attendance or for people who are gonna be watching this later. We're really happy to have you here and we really encourage you to stay for as long as you can and listen to as many reviews as you can. Um, it often helps to listen to a number of applications to understand how panelists are looking at the applications and to hear their comments. They can be really helpful. Um, we do ask that all attendees remain on mute. Um, there is no public comment portion of these review meetings and the panelists are basing their review solely on what they see in the applications. Um, so if for whatever reason your application is being reviewed and you hear a misstatement about something that was written in the application, such as a number being misstated or something that was just clearly not correct, um, then you can put a note in the chat and we'll bring it to the attention of the panel. But those are the only kind of comments that we'll be taking um, on the applications. So we're gonna be going through these applications pretty quickly today, but please know that individually, all of the reviewers read them carefully. They reviewed all of the materials thoroughly. So don't be concerned if it looks like the review is short, um, much time has gone into these reviews in advance. Um, so we'll be going through each application in the order assigned. Um, we're gonna be looking at the treatment and then we're gonna ask a lead reader just to introduce the artist or the group um, to the panel and any other comments that need to be made. Um, the panelists may weigh in on the discussion and um, at the conclusion of all the nine reviews, we're gonna order the reviews according to score and then Jennifer will make the final award announcements. So that's about it. And um, I think we can begin with our first application. And I believe uh, Christina will be leading on this. Hello, everybody. Um, I'm Christina Marie Jeffers, and um, I will be reading for uh, the first project submitted by Brian Martin, and his project is Death at Sunrise. Um, this is a feature-length film um, titled Death at Sunrise, and they are applying for a uh, production grant with um, their budget over 100000 it is a revenge Western. Um, and um, I like this project because it plays on the strengths and history of Sacramento. Um, you know, to do a Western in the Sacramento area is great. And I also like, cause there is a, um, a race element to it that um, highlights uh, like historically what um, could have happened back in the day um, bringing more of an understanding of the Black experience in America. Um, and let's see here, I have my notes. <laughs> um, yes, and then um, I think the, um, the application might improve um, with some of the numbers didn't match um, for the production nights in hotels, it was a little um, confusing. But then when I went into the um, the materials, the support materials, um, it did clear that up for me. Um, but yeah, overall, I think it was a great application, um, and I supported accordingly. Does anybody else have any comments? I found similar discrepancies, Christina, in some of the numbers relating to vendors, cost and crew, percentage of um, cast and crew that are, are uh, from marginalized community hotel nights, but I couldn't resolve those discrepancies. So. Okay. 
Any other comments? Yeah, I think just um, to help improve this, if they were to submit again the same project, is to be very literal. Um, you know, if like uh, just for example, like if you say you have seven crew um, staying in, in hotel, have their contact information, have who they are, perhaps um, how they demonstrate diversity, and um, who's staying in the hotels for how many nights. Um, it might just kind of clear up that digging around for the information. Okay. Thank you. Okay, if there are no other comments on this application, we can move to the second application. Um, and I believe Todd is gonna yep. lead on that. And I think Christina is recusing herself from this application, correct? Okay. Um, this, uh, this proposal is uh, for a documentary slash short film slash music video entitled Love Illusion, the film. Uh, they applied for a post-production grant with a budget under $100,000. The film is about becoming a successful musician in every sense of the word uh, success um, and dealing with various struggles along the way along that path. Uh, more broadly, I think it aims to tell a story about how someone arrives at a musical space, regardless of, of where they started. I think this project has the makings of a good idea, but despite the applicant's past experience in producing a comparable show on Access Sacramento, the project needs to uh, put more meat on the bones, I think it needs to be more detailed and, and less conceptual in, in my view. Um, there's clearly a complicated history uh, on this project. I wish the applicant um, would have focused uh, on the going forward issues uh, and the future of the project rather than trying to correct um, whatever happened in the past. I would encourage the applicant to reapply if they don't get a grant in this cycle um, with more detailed description of the plot, understanding it's a you know music video and a documentary. Um, and uh, I'd like to see something that connects uh, the details for use of vendors, for shooting schedule, tied in more closely than, than it is now. It's, it's very much a concept. A couple other specifics. Um, the, the vendor list is different than the number listed in the application summary. Um, and the same is true with um, the local cast and crew. I think some of this has to do with our own uncertain, my own uncertainty about what constitutes local cast and crew whether that's purely Sacramento proper or somewhere else uh, in the region. Uh, and some of the things are difficult to evaluate because they're at the stage where they haven't contracted for everything. They're based, you know, they still have auditions they're gonna need to do. So what percentage of total talent is local or represents marginalized communities completely unknown. And let me defer to anybody else who might have comments questions about it. Any other comments on this application? I think it would have been a strong application if the budget was more detailed, a few more line items specifically, for example, like what rates are they getting for hotel rooms? Um, you know, how many days are people going to be on set for that type of stuff? Thank you. I concur with everything Todd said. Those were my feelings as well. I just wanted more meat on the bones. Okay, if there are no other comments, we can get ready for the next application. I wanna give a couple of minutes for us to be able to pull up the treatment on the screen before we begin. And I think this is Mark H. Yeah, this is. Um, I just no want to interrupt. Here. Let me interrupt for just a second. I just want to note that Mark is going to be 
um, doing numbers three and four because they are the same project. Um, they're just applying for a production grant as well as a post-production grant in the same round. So he's giving the overall for both three and four. Sorry, Mark, go ahead. Thank you, thanks. Um, my, my questions for the filmmaker would be, it wasn't clear from, from the breakdown that I saw uh, where the money needed to go. Um, it's a, a timely subject and that can work for or against a film. And can I stop uh, you there for a second, Mark? Can you just introduce the name of the film in the description? Sorry about that. Sure. No Home Here details the stories of Sacramento's most compelling unsheltered individuals and emphasizes how the homeless crisis is a heartbreaking yet solvable problem. Thanks, sorry. I, I can't get to my notes when, when, when you're sharing screen, so I'm, I'm, I'm a little stuck, but that's, that's okay. That's perfect, thanks. Uh, am, am, I, am I going on? Yes, please. Okay, um, the, uh, the trailer that I saw was very nicely done, I, I, I must say. I didn't see any compelling new ideas in the trailer, and that's, that's not a deal breaker, but it is a point that, that stuck with me in this application. Uh, or if, with any application, it, it, the the idea of making a film at all is a, is a, a, an enormous undertaking. To make a film that achieves what it sets out to achieve, that's almost impossible. And when it happens, it happens beautifully. The other aspect of what we're discussing here is how does this fit into Sacramento's filmmaking community? How does it enhance, um, how does it enhance the possibilities for making films here in Sacramento? Uh, this seems like an extremely difficult production to mount because it's dropping in on, um, a unique community and hoping to not draw attention to the production to tell the truth. Um, I'm unclear as to how the budget helps that aspect of this kind of filmmaking. Uh, documentary filmmaking is notoriously long on production and can, can be long in post-production. I'm not sure where the numbers have come from, but I think they're about right. They're maybe a little tall, but maybe about right. Um, I think if the application could have billboarded a fresh idea on this issue, that would have helped me be way more enthusiastic about it. Like I say, the trailer was, was really quite nicely done. Um, I would recommend taking this application very seriously. Okay, any other comments um, about either portion of the, or each request you can talk about separately or together? Yeah, the some of the concerns I had were, it seemed like there was um, not enough local emphasis, uh, even though the topic is Sacramento based. Um, they talk about built bringing in a film crew from, I believe, LA, they said, uh, only one of the six of the crew listed in the attachments are local. And of the 15 vendors they list, there's no, um, there's no detail to support that. So it, it's a little casual on that. And I'm not sure. Um, I, I wish there were more local resources involved in this. I agree with Todd. I, I, I was struck by the fact that 
a lot of the a lot of the production personnel are coming from out of town and that that kind of didn't ring a bell with me yeah i, I wanted to say uh, similar that um it's it there was no interns listed in there that could have been an opportunity to bring in more local even if there was a need for a higher professional uh, work but um, I agree with the other two uh, speakers that it did show limited local presence. I will say too, for the size of the budget, there was no reference to uh, marketing or distribution uh, after the product is finished. And that should be at least a consideration in their presentation. Okay, any other comments? Okay, we can move on to application number five. Well, that's me. Lori's gonna leave this one, yes. Okay. Hold on. I do need to get my notes, okay. Uh, so this is a short film and it's titled The Hamsa. Uh, they've applied for a production grant with a total budget under $100,000, um, just briefly under a thousand, hundred thousand. Um, <clears throat> so The Hamsa is a romantic comedy fantasy based on the mythology of both the Jewish and Russian people uh, it's an adventurous romantic comedy about a man looking for love whose mother can't stop under interfering. The only problem is she's been dead for over a decade. Uh, it's a very funny premise and the filmmaker wants to tell uh, a timeless story uh, in a comedic fashion while showing off Sacramento's downtown and making kind of a I love New York life type of film. Um, which I like that concept about anything that we shoot here in Sacramento. Um, I liked it because it's a funny multicultural premise uh, that I think could be family friendly too. Not enough of that. Uh, that's an issue that has not been addressed in our rankings, but uh, uh, ratings are something that I'm always curious about when it comes to how that film's going to be hitting the audiences. Um, I, I, want, I had questions, uh, I don't know if it was an improvement, but I wanted more clarity um, on the mention of puppeteering and puppet making that's done historically by this filmmaker uh, all, compared to the potential live action uh, for this film. That wasn't clear to me whether it was an integration of both or um, I would like to know just more about that. And uh, overall, I, I thought it was a great idea. And I think the creativity would be truly unique compared to the traditional narrative films we usually see. Anybody else? Um, I think the application would have been a little stronger if the treatment had a bit more uh, character information. I was looking for that. Any other comments on this application? Well, this is one of those ones where I think it, it didn't qualify uh, per se in ranking, uh, but it has a lot of potential outside of some of the areas that it's being scored on. Um, so I don't know how that factors into this, but that is important. Well, I think the, the way the scoring gets done on these, if you're not dealing with, you know, marginalized community in some way, either as subject matter or in crew and talent, um, you're not going to get some points. And if the project isn't very big, it's not going to have that much economic impact. So it's not going to get that many points. So. Yeah, unfortunately. Okay, there are no other comments? 
we're ready for the next um, application to be brought up. And Houghton's gonna take the lead on this and, I, and Mark Freeman's gonna be recusing himself from this one. Thanks, Melissa. Um, this is a TV pilot. The applicant is Ryan Graham. The title is Starved. Um, the applicants applied for a production grant with a budget under $100,000. Um, the project is a 30 minute comedy that revolves around an immigrant owner and his colleagues of a staffing agency in a fictionalized rural American town. Its storylines re revolve around a host of characters coming to terms with what working in America looks like and feels like right now. Um, I liked it because of the innumerable intersections possible between different characters with different lived experiences. Uh, in a less conscious or forced way, I feel the storylines and characters reflect the fact that Sacramento is such a diverse place. It was a very thorough application. The pitch deck was creative and mapped out the show cohesively. It also was humorous, a nod to what the show itself seems destined to be. The budget was comprehensive and detailed, and the application met many of the criteria, like local cast and crew, diverse stories, et cetera, at their highest level for me. I also got a sense of the characters through the pitch deck and the, scoot, the shooting schedule was clear and concise. Um, I didn't have any improvements to add as overall. Um, I thought based on the supplied materials, Starved sounds like an interesting project by local directors with a predominantly local crew telling a range of compellingly diverse stories that are relevant to our current moment. Um, the application made it evident that the project has good structure. It has the framework to be managed well administratively and is a strong indication that this group of film professionals have some expertise in creating local and artistically interesting projects. So sorry if that sounded a little bit formal, but I, I, I would recommend this for. Thank you. Does anybody have anything they'd like to add to that? I agree with all that. And I think the other thing that's remarkable here is that it makes a claim that they're already 90% funded. And so being associated as a partner in this uh, to support something of this quality seems like a really good idea to me. I also like the way they um, wove in their creative with their pitch. It looked very polished and thorough. Um, and it was, it was just top notch application. Thank you. Okay, if there are no other comments, we can move on to the next one. And this is known to be number seven. And Christina, you're up again. Okay. This one is a music video titled Alive um, by India featuring Darian Dorsey and um, they applied for a um, production grant. Their budget is under 100K, like just under. And um, this project details um, a person's journey from being incarcerated to trying to return to mainstream life and the trials and tribulations that come with that. Um, I really like this submission because it um, had a kind of a unique uh, presentation to it where they included like a mood board um, and uh, some imagery and um, shot list that was very specific including um, their storyboard um, and the budget top sheet matched the underlying budget it was very clear and concise very simplified uh, very straightforward so um, yeah, overall, I thought it was a really great application. Um, if, if there was something that I would improve this application is maybe um, just a more traditional PDF of a, a summary sheet on top. Um, because as you can see on the screen here, um, it, it doesn't really address all the questions that the, um, the panel had on the top page of what they submitted. So. Um, perhaps just a summary on top of this page would have made it a little cleaner. Um, but yeah, I think this, this was a very strong application. Um, any other comments? Um, the only thing I want to raise is that their actual list of vendors 
is much larger than the number they claim. And I'm not sure that that will be reflected in the way everybody is scoring for this. Or how meaningful that difference is. Yeah, again, I think that the filmmakers should really try to make their vendor list match, their cast and crew list match. And if you don't have all of your cast yet, like you're waiting on casting in LA, um, to put like proposed cast, so at least we know what direction you're going in. Um, and then we do have a complete casting crew list and vendor list. Thank you. Any other comments? Great. Then we are ready to go to number eight. Okay, no and uh, Todd will leave this yeah. discussion. So this is a documentary a film entitled Hangtown. They applied for a production grant with a budget over $100,000. Uh, the project follows the experience of descendants of African-American pioneers in gold rush country. Uh, in doing this, the project has several aims. They want to lay out the little known history of lynching and land theft in this area. More importantly, they want to show how false historical narratives continue to haunt communities of color today. They want to explicitly reveal the role of uh, white supremacy groups in support of sustaining these false narratives. And um, they want to take a look at, they want to examine the difficult process these kinds of um, historical wrongs, how difficult it is to write these sorts of historical wrongs. Uh, for me, the proposal hits a, a bunch of, of uh, good notes. It's well-defined. It's an important issue in the Sacramento region uh, to deal with now. Um, got high marks from me um, on reflecting the experience of a marginalized community. Um, there is extensive experience in doing document, documentary fundraising uh, which obviously affects the feasibility of, of doing this project. Um, and they get also high marks from me in terms of the potential economic impact because it's a very long project. It's 40 weeks of production and 36 weeks of post-production. Uh, those are all the comments I have. So please, anybody else? My my notes on this one, uh, the concept is timely and topical, the story is pertinent to locals as well as, as, well as historians. Um, the tensions and personal interconnections can make this a provocative documentary. I think it's got all the components. I don't know where it is ending, so that'll be interesting to find out. Um, I'm always suspect because this was a budget that's very heavy on pending funds and pending funds appeared to be primarily uh, applied for grants or funding that is, you know, uncertain at best. Uh, so I'm, I'm never sure if that's something that we should take seriously until it's real, you know? Um, I appreciate that they've made these strides to, to find the money elsewhere, um, but those are some pretty heavy lifts. Anyone else? Uh, were we empowered to ask the filmmaker questions, I'd be very interested to know how the very precise production and post-production weekly schedules were arrived at um that's a I, i'm curious about that and it affects the financial underpinning of the enterprise and i just don't know the processes involved it's curious to me um, in terms of economic impacts i was it's perhaps a little uh, small scale but it was great to see some um uh, diverse local historians on the sort of cast and crew list as advisors.
That's great. Um, and, and those kind of overarching notes that you have, Mark, are the things that we can, you know, take back as comments that could be possibly incorporated in future applications just to provide you with that better information. So those are all good notes to have. I, I just wanted to say real quick, just to reinforce that having historians and consultants on something that's really need to have accurate information was something that stood out for me. So I don't want to say that was a, a big plus. Okay, any other comments? Then we are at our last application and uh, Mark Herzig is gonna leave this one. This is a, um, an extremely, I, I found this to be an extremely interesting submission um, because it, it is definitely based in the valley where we are. That's a good thing. Um, and I think it's, I, I think it's, it's historical background is of enormous value if, if carried out of enormous value regardless. So I think the value of the project is self-evident. Uh, I'm unclear as to, again, how the, how the numbers were arrived at and what, what, the, what the, I, I couldn't really find the spine of a plan there, but I would encourage, based on the strength of their idea, I would encourage these applicants to, to stick with it. Yeah, I wanted to say that uh, when reading the, the treatment, um, I was very impressed with the desire to reach out and try to reach um, direct sources before they get too old. And I think that's very important when doing documentaries that get uh, direct source um, versus going to a historical record. So I thought that was real important and um, I really want to commend that part of the application. I have a question. When they're indicating documentary, um, they're not saying short or long. Do we know if this is intended to be a feature or short? So in the guidelines, we don't differentiate between documentary short and documentary feature. Um, so unless they mention it, there's there's no way to know. But it's not a criteria that you know we have to worry about. Okay, just curious. I, I enjoyed the fact that the budget was very detailed. It was also really encouraging um, to see that interns were included in the budget. Um, one of the things I would have loved to have seen in terms of the vendor list, I, I didn't really see any post-production services listed here or, you know, Metro Media was there as a production vendor, but it was mostly food vendors. So I would have liked to have seen if they were going to use sort of more local um, production services. Thank you. Any final comments on this application? If not, then we have gone through all the applications and we're gonna bring up in a minute or two, the score, there they are, the scores. Okay, so I apologize for the uh, colors of the below and above are too similar and we couldn't figure this out, but so um, it looks like we have the winners of um, number nine, which is Harvesting Dreams, and that's the documentary that we just um, discussed. Um, and these are for below 100,000. The next one below 100,000 that has the highest score is the TV show Staffed. So congratulations to those two winners for the under 100,000 category. Uh, for above 100,000, we uh, looks like Hangtown, the documentary uh, was a high score. And so congratulations to them. And then I missed, what's the, is this? Oh, and then it's uh, number one, right? Uh, Brian Martin's Death at Sunrise. So those are the two above 100,000 winners. And then the post-production winner is 
um, No Home Here. So Leslie Silver's documentary uh, about the homeless. So congratulations to those winners. I will be notifying you directly um, with next steps. So congratulations. And to all of those um, applicants who did not apply, we encourage you to take these notes, watch this video, ask questions, um, ask for help. We're here to help um, you know, get your applications stronger and apply again in round three, which opens uh, March 15th. So thank you again. Thank you to the panelists for being here. Um, let's see if I have any other notes. I think that's it. So thank you again, panelists. I hope you'll be around for round three, <laughs> please. <laughs> but I appreciate all your efforts and um, you know, really taking the time to delve into these projects. It's just so important that we um, allow these, um, these stories to be told and they're important stories. So thank you so much. I think we've got a great array this round and um, look forward to the next round. So thanks so much. Thanks. Bye.